Hello guys and welcome, it is that is Hobby 2 dude here today bringing you yet another Splatoon 2 video. Because patch 3.2 has finally come onto the horizon, it's going to be coming out tomorrow on July the 13th. And this patch has a lot to do with changes with weapons, buffs, nerfs, and special, you know, differences and stuff like that. So, without further ado, let's just get into it. There's a lot to go through, a lot that can be really relevant, a lot that isn't so relevant, but I'm gonna try and be brief and go through it as much as I possibly can. So starting with the Splish schematic, the ground coverage has now been increased and does 10% more damage to the Rainmaker shield. Not too much to say about that, other than paints better and does more damage to Rainmaker shield. The Splatisher Jr. has now got its new own, I guess, special ink tank and it has a 10% higher capacity than a regular ink tank. Just showing you a picture of this, which is, you know, gives the Splatisher Jr. a nice touch. And mainly, it doesn't really matter that it has this, I guess, tank. It's just saying, hey, the Splatisher Jr. is just now 10% more ink efficient. That's pretty much what, what the buff is. The splash matic now has no accuracy penalty when shooting in midair. So basically, the splash matic now has perfect accuracy when you're shooting in the air, which is pretty insane honestly i honestly don't know how much difference that's going to make to the splash matic but if, we, if it sees more play just because of it then that'll be cool the air spray now has better ground coverage so it now paints better when you're shooting towards the floor just like how the splash matic is the lunar blaster has now 20 percent more accuracy while jumping which is really nice to see considering i guess the beforehand the lunar blaster had some pretty terrible accuracy when you're jumping in the air it was just it was disgusting honestly so I actually wonder how that's gonna uh, make a difference to the Lunar Blaster in general. The L3 Nozzle Nose now has 11% more run speed while shooting, so the L3 Nozzle Nose is a lot more mobile while it's shooting, so that's kind of nice to see. The H3 Nozzle Nose with three shots will always deal 100% damage or more damage, which is really nice to see. Well, basically what this is saying is that it does not matter if uh, the H3 has fall off damage at all. It will always do the same amount of consistent damage every single time. So if you shoot all the way to the air and it like lands on your target coming downwards, it's going to deal 100% damage. It also now paints walls better, which is not really much to say about that. The Squeezer's auto mode now shoots six frames faster, which is pretty fast. It's about a tenth of a second faster, so interesting to see. If that's the case, actually, it'll probably be a lot better for inking, just like shooting around with it. Because honestly, I feel like that's one thing, I guess, the auto mode kind of struggled with uh, beforehand because it, it could paint but it didn't paint that well, so maybe this would actually help it. Now, all rollers, including the Carbon Roller, Splat Roller, Dynamo Roller, and Flingzer Roller, now have a max rolling speed that consumes 33% less ink. So, very, very nice rollers. They can roll much more to their heart's content, and a, pr a pretty significant number, too, so. For the Squiffer, the air and grounds now have the same charge speed. Beforehand, if you're in the air charging your Squiffer, uh, it would charge much faster because it had beforehand like 100% buff uh, to its air charging speed, but it wasn't completely like its ground charging speed. But now they've made it the exact same speed. So you can pretty much jump in the air and charge your Squiffer at the same speed, which is, I gotta say, really, really cool. Ooh, there's a buff for the Elite 4K. 15% damage increase to the Raymaker shield at full charge. Next. For the Hydra Splatling, the full charge damage has changed from 35 damage to 40 damage, and partial charge damage is now 28 damage to 32 damage. In general, the Hydra Splatling is just much stronger than it was ever before. I'm not really too sure what that can really be for, like other than the, like the Raymaker shield, maybe taking out bubbles as well. I'm not really too sure, honestly, but... In general, the Hydra Splatling is just a lot stronger. Really interesting buff for the Undercover Brella. If you get a kill or an assist while your Brella shield has been destroyed, getting a killer assist immediately recovers your Brella shield. Now, I really like this buff because it makes the Undercover Brella a little more usable in a sense. Like, you don't have to play as safe because there are times where you're using the shield and you use it for one guy, but your shield is instantly destroyed and then you're going up against another guy and it's just like, well... I can't do anything now. But now having this buff allows the Undercover Brella to play a little bit more aggro uh, than before. For the Rapid Blasters, including the Rapid Blaster and Rapid Blaster Pro, 6% range decrease on explosions. Very, very needed. 
Thank you. Now, some people may say 6% isn't really that much, but trust me, it can make a difference. Now, just think about the Rapid Blast's explosion. It's 6% all around, so it means 6% if your target is above the blast, 6% if your target is on the right, 6% if the target's underneath, 6% on the left. 6% all around the blast. So this is going to encourage people to be a little bit more accurate with the Rapid Blaster, which is much needed because the explosion radius before was pretty stupid, I'm gonna, not gonna lie. For the ballpoint splatling, a very much deserved nerf. In-air charge speed has been decreased by 33%, and out-of-ink charge speed has been decreased by 33%. Very much deserved. If you have ever played this weapon while you're playing on Schellendorf and you're on top of the glass, this weapon was untouchable, and this is very much deserved. Unless you had another ballpoint and you're using this weapon, it's just like, excuse me, you don't even need to go down to recover ink because the charge speed when you're out of ink was fast enough to allow you to just stay up there forever, which was just ridiculous. But finally, this has actually been fixed. For the Dually Squelcher, there has been an increased ink consumption when shooting by 20%. That's a hard hit to Dooley Sculptures. I can understand it because a lot of people would use this weapon but just kind of roll around all the time and it would feel like you'd never run out of ink. I still think the weapon is going to be really good. It's just that people are going to be a little bit more conservative with their ink tank now. So that is everything to do with the main weapons. Now I'm going to talk to you about the two sub weapon buffs. Starting with point sensors, they now have 21% more range. Honestly, really nice to have. Just you get to throw your point sensor a little bit further than before and have a better idea of where people could possibly be. For the autobomb, however, it's kind of like a buff and a nerf. So the autobomb's ink consumption has been changed from 70% to 55%. So it only consumes almost half the amount of ink. Autobombs now follow your targets 1.5 seconds less than before, and the explosion radius has been reduced by 7%. So the nice thing about that is that you can throw more autobombs faster. Uh, the bad thing is that autobombs don't follow your targets as, uh, I guess, as much as anymore. And of course, the explosion radius becoming less apparent. So that's pretty much everything to do with the subweb. Now coming to the big guns that could possibly, potentially, have a huge meta shift in our current meta of Splatoon 2. And that is the Tenta Missiles, as they have received a bunch of buffs. So starting off, if the Tenta Missiles have locked onto one target, 10 missiles, I am not mistaken, 10 missiles will be fired to that target. So just think about it. I only think just four or five missiles would travel to your target uh, if you, I guess, located one. But now 10 is going to go straight to that person. And why this is so good is because it makes Tensor Missiles in general more effective. Because I would always say that Tensor Missiles weren't worth using unless you located at least three people because you're going to get a bunch more missiles out. But knowing that if I locate only one person now, I know that at least 10 missiles are going to go to that person, opposed to just four or five. And it doesn't end there. So if you target two targets, Five missiles per target are fired at a faster rate than before. Meaning that Tensor Missiles are going to shoot much faster than they have before, which is really nice to see. I'm pretty sure this will apply to if you get, uh, I guess, more than two. Using more special power up now increases the ink coverage of the missile's explosion. Great to see. If you're locating more people, then you're going to shoot ink a lot more all over the floor. Tensor Missiles can now target the Rainmaker Shield. That's a good plus. If you're needing to shoot the Rainmaker Shield from a far away place, and I'm pretty sure if it's the only thing you're shooting, 10 missiles are gonna go straight to the Rainmaker Shield and you can pop it straight away. Straight up, Tensor Missiles, I think, are gonna be really good to use on Rainmaker, just cause of this. Although the damage to the shield has been reduced by 50%, and, and that's pretty much because you can accurately locate uh, missiles to shoot the Rainmaker in Shield in general. And lastly, the reticle appearing on targets will now indicate how many missiles will shoot towards that target. And that's just a really good indicator to know how many missiles are going towards your people, how many missiles are going towards the Rainmaker. Honestly, just a lot of really good stuff. And I say it again, I really think this is going to be a really strong pick to have on things like Rainmaker just because of this. So I'm really interested to see how this plays out and how people are going to use it on uh, different maps and modes. For Splashdown, there has now been an increased painting radius. And there's also going to be less gaps in the ink coverage uh, when using the splashdown. So 
basically splash down you're gonna have better painting overall and lastly for inkjet the landing marker will now be easier to see and we'll also have a timer to know when the user is landing so if you're someone who's waiting next to your opponent posing team's inkjet marker you can now know when that person's gonna be landing and you're gonna have a better idea of when to shoot so better information for the opposing team inkjet the weapon itself is still going to be really strong but now the very last thing is the special point adjustment the only buff that was there was for the 96 deco which is now from 190 to 180 but i'm going to point out some very notable ones so the custom blaster rapid blaster deco dually squelches the custom dually squelches and parry duallys and Dark Tetra Dooley. Besides the Dark Tetra Dooleys, everything else has gone up by 10 points, but for the Dark Tetra Dooleys, it's gone up by 20. Now, there's also another thing that I wanna mention, is that there is a lot of weapons here that have had nerfs just because they have Tenta Missiles. Now, I'm just saying now, in this meta that we are in now, nobody uses these weapons, but they've already, they've already been nerfed before the patches actually came out. This includes the Clash Blaster Neo, the, the regular Slusher, the regular Splat Dooleys. So just because of this, because of all these weapons are being, I guess, nerfed, it kind of tells you like, hmm, maybe Tenta Missiles are actually going to make a b big difference coming into this meta. So I'm not too sure. It's going to require a lot of testing. I'm looking forward to trying it out. But I think that alone kind of tells you that maybe Tenta Missiles are going to be really strong just because of all the changes. Now, that's pretty much everything I've got for you for patch notes and stuff like that. Now, before anybody says, I know there's two new weapons coming out and there's also a new map coming out. There's going to be another video coming out from me on my, all my thoughts about it and how it's likely going to play out in Splatoon 2. So be prepared for that video. That's videos coming out very soon. As to this video, we are concluding it. These are the patch notes. Expect a patch comparison video coming out very, very soon. And yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say for this patch. Hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did, please like, favorite, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Both in the description below. Do it for both of you if you're feeling generous. So, as guys, this has been that SLB2 dude. And I shall see you guys in a future video.